So I'm here on a drive. I'm on a back road. There's my car. I'm on a back road on the way to North Fork behind Millerton Lake. I can't remember what road it's called. 221, 212, I don't know. But I want to make an image of this scene right here, this oak tree clouds. So I thought I'd record making the image on my iPhone as opposed to my camera so you can see kind of the basics of working with just the iPhone. So of course, you know to touch where you want to get focus. You'll notice that a yellow box opens up with a sun next to it. By sliding that sun up, you're gonna increase the brightness overexposure or you're going to by pulling the sun down decrease the brightness for underexposure now remember what we learned in class when you want a darker image it you should still kind of properly expose it proper on this particular on the iphone regular camera is the middle of that slider so you'll see right there is what they call proper. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of frame up how do I wanna shoot this scene. And remember on the iPhone 11, you have other choices for your lens. Here's the wide angle, normal, telephoto. So you can see the difference in lenses there. I'm gonna shoot on the wide angle lens and I'm probably gonna shoot one horizontally so I turn my camera like that to shoot it horizontal so I've got this post here that you see in the foreground and, and you can see there's a line of posts that give us a nice leading line compositionally so if I arrange myself kind of to use that line got an interesting little sign here too underground cable watch out watch out watch out so I'm gonna kind of lower my perspective I like these little weeds in here. So I'm gonna to turn to horizontal. You see a car coming, not a lot of cars coming, but I think a lot of them live in the area. So I'm really liking this foreground that's established with the plant material in front. You'll see I have a very, you know, uh, long focus or great depth of field going here. And that's what I'm wanting for this picture. So I'm gonna, Kind of move a little forward, focus that. That'll be my first shot. So I press the button to take the shot. Uh, you can remember you have self timers on here. You also have your flash, which certainly is not necessary today. You can see the clouds are pretty spectacular right now. And then I'm gonna take a vertical shot. And with the vertical shot, I actually wanna be normal lens. Cause I'm gonna, it's really more about the tree than anything else. Now, I love this compositional arrangement. If I can move it a little, I don't want that sign though. What I really like is the, the line of the fence post on the left and the dead oak tree on the right kind of gives me framing to my tree. So I'm gonna take that one. I like that shot a lot. Nice cloud sky. You'll notice my background is split almost 50-50. So I'm gonna try some that kind of change that angle a little. I'm tilting my camera upwards towards the sky for these shots, give a little different angle. Then I'm gonna even try lowering it more in the, the weeds per se. You can get really crazy with that. So final shot I want is I want just the tree itself. Now, look at the wide angle view. That's got some interest for me. I wanna shoot one like this. That's got a nice compositional kind of quality. The clouds coming up in the upper right hand corner really set it off. So I'm gonna take a couple of those. Let me focus on one and brighten it a little. So I'm, I'm raising my brightness to get my exposure up. Raise it a little more. You can see how that lightens in the foreground in particular. Now I'm, I'm starting to get clouds covering my sun. As you can see right there, that little guy right there. Take a picture of him just to get notice there. So 
as the light dissipates, I start kind of looking around my scene and seeing if there's other images that I really like. This road image is very nice. So I'm going to frame that up, get the clouds in particular. Maybe raise up my exposure a tad bit to get the road a little more. There. So I'm starting to get some light back here. Let me get a couple more shots of this. Now, the light is changing a lot here because of the cloud coverage. And I'm liking how I get a lot of different shadow effects because of that light changing. The shadows get more prominent like now and they start disappearing when a cloud comes into covering up the sun. So now I'm gonna do a different kind of layout. I'm gonna have this pole kind of be a third in this composition, echo the vertical line of the, of the tree itself. Try that on point five. You can see on our wide angle view, we start losing kind of the the bigness of the tree, but we're getting, of course, a lot more sky. I'm going to put my, we'll be talking about rule of thirds a lot more coming up, but I'm going to put my horizon line on my bottom third line that you can see on my phone there. Take a picture of that. Now I'm going to take a few with my regular camera also to show that. Uh, that won't be recorded. Ooh, I like this composition a lot. Let's get a little... Off there, good. Let's see how our horizontal looks. Take a couple more there. So now we've got our images and I'm gonna go ahead and do an edit on location to kind of show you. Oh look, my shadow show you kind of what I'm doing. Hipsmatic, that's where I like to do, as you guys have figured out, the majority of my editing. Uh, if I need to prepare files, I often will take those files and uh, do work in Photoshop Express to begin with. Seeing all my earlier work here. Oh, here we're in the tree. So let's take a look here and decide which one we're gonna edit. Oh, I like that one. I take a lot of the same shots. <laughs> I need to, to do deletes on my, on my actual images. I've been taking a lot of pictures on this little road trip. Ooh, okay, let's work on that one. So I'm gonna come in and it applies my first basic edit to me, which oh, I'm liking that a lot. It's kind of why I stay with this. I built this edit and then saved it in Hipsmatic. It's called King in my collection. Another one I created is called Haze Dream. You can see what that does to the image right there. I'm a big fan of the very tightly tilt shifty kind of looking focus. Uh, you can also order pre-made kind of uh, edit styles in this program. Uh, and some of them are good. Some of them I don't care for. But they all change all the settings. So I work with this one because I know it well. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to start playing with my different lens choices. I'm liking this lens, what it does. It's one of my favorites anyway. It's called the Jane Lens. So we're gonna, I'm just going to go through, and I tend to like to check out everything before I make decisions, even though I'm familiar with a lot of these. It's just how I keep learning what I like, how my tastes change, how different images ask to be treated certain ways. Like, I'm really liking that. Let me turn down the vignette some. Oh, look at that. So this lens applies a vignette. It naturally is a vignetted lens. I'm liking that color. Let me go to one of my favorites here. That's a nice one too. This one adds like streaks to your image, which I do use occasionally. 
I'm liking that, but it gets weird on its extreme exchange. So I'm coming through here. See that? You see how everything starts glowing a little white? That's because this lens jacks up definition quite a bit. <clears throat> you can also edit in here and have no lens applied. It will just use the the shot of the lens as it is in the iPhone. Now I'm liking that a lot right there. So I'm going to... And I don't use this particular lens very often it's got weird kind of splotchy aberration on it aberration or any image problems or changes made by a lens itself so you can see how focus gets muddled in this around the corners that's part of the attribute of this lens so let me check that out i'm going to come in and raise my exposure some because oh i don't know if i like that now that gets super washy. Hmm. Might not go with this one after that. Let's see if I can shift the color. Because it's a little too green for me. So let me back in some yellow maybe. Come in and bring in a red a bit. Oh, I like that. It's not. I don't know if I'm in love with it yet. But let me add some texture to the image itself i'm gonna go back and choose my film now i'm gonna apply this my one of my favorites called love 81 oh i like that that's looking pretty interesting might be good with that mm, i like how washed out it is actually let's go extreme on that now i'm gonna go back to the love 81 Editing is, is not so much about making the perfect image to me. It is to some people. I shouldn't say that categorically like it's, it's uh, the way everybody works. But to me, editing is actually where I fine-tune my visual voice. And I have an aesthetic that tends to be grungier and dirtier, plays with focus a lot and that's the visual voice i like to speak in it, it harkens to old processes it nostalgizes that's not a real word but it works here it nostalgizes the image to a degree um it, it's become the way i talk photographically at this current point in my work so uh i'm i'm happy with that so i'm gonna go in here and vibrancy can can change your color quite a bit. Check that out. That's very otherworldly. If we take vibrancy away, you're going to notice it gets even weirder in this particular film. I'm kind of liking that a lot, though. That's very kind of painterly aesthetic-wise. I'm going to save a couple versions of this. I like this all purple one. So I'm going to go and save one of those. Click in the top right hand corner checkbox to save. This is kind of how uh, some infrared films make images look if we were using older techniques. So now I'm going to go and, and change it back to different coloring. So I was working in my vibrancy. So now I'm going to come and bring it back to there. I'm going to save that version also. Now, I have an iPhone that has 500 gigabytes. It's a big iPhone, and you can understand why I use that, <laughs> the big iPhone, because of the number of images I make. So now I'm going to go back, and I keep going edit from original, because then it keeps all of the original data. If I go edit existing, it's going to make this picture as it is, like, the normal and then I can edit on top of that, which I do sometimes to kind of do dual effects on things. So I'm going to edit from original. I'm going to come back into my uh, vibrancy again. And now I'm going to raise it some to this kind of otherworldly 
color and I'm going to save that because I'm not sure which one I like the most and I'm going to look at them later uh, to decide exactly what I want. And I may even go back and edit some more. I'm editing on the site here in the digital plain air style. Um, I've started gravitating towards some re-edits and losing some of the staunch uh, kind of way that I've been dealing with uh, my edits, kind of the rules. I've changed them up a little. So I have these three different looking images. Here's the other one. And I want to, I'm just putting a favorite on each of these so that I can find them easier in all of my picks. All right. So those are all favorited. So now let's look at another one. I like this setup a lot. I like this setup. That's got a better angle. Sometimes really small differences will make the biggest change in the image that you're producing like that road picture it's a great pick so you can see this is where the light was starting to get shaded there we go that's an interesting one Look at that depth of field difference because I'm focusing closer on the, the plant material in the foreground. Notice I get naturally shallower depth of field because remember there's three things that affect depth of field and I'll be making you uh, a depth of field, a shutter speed, and an ISO video just for those separately that you should be getting week after spring break just to give you some practice in those and some understanding visually of how they go. Uh, so I am liking that, but the tree was my, my focus. And so I like the tree in focus. Now you'll notice that I'm losing focus on those foreground elements that I like more. So I'm going to take a look at these different shots. That's got a very pleasing kind of quality to it. That does too. Oh, that's better. I like that. So let's let's edit this one here. So I'm going to start again with my basic edit. It always applies that. I'm not terribly fond of how it's looking in this particular one, so I'm going to go and start changing things. I'm going to choose a different lens for this one. I'm sure of that. So I'm starting to look at my lenses first. Lenses are just looks. They're just ways. Each lens, and especially in old processes, created very different qualities of look. And so they try to emulate those historical changes in the lenses that they choose that you can actually purchase in Hipsmatic. So now I'm not sure which one I want on this one. That's pretty nice. Getting hungry, too. Mm, that one's got a nice quality to it. You'll notice if you turn it down, there's normal. It starts killing your vibrancy. And then it kind of splits it a little at the end on the max of this. And it's changing my definition a lot, too. That's why you see like kind of white appearing in the grass there. Now, if we go all the way across my thing, this is my shot without a lens right here. And we can edit from that point, too. You can still add films for different looks. See, like that. I don't know that I like that film very much for this one. It's my favorite film on these, but it's time to go searching for some new ones. Make some new purchases. Ooh, I like the black and white. Some of these films do weird stuff. Add different things to your work. Uh, I like the washed out quality of that one. Oh, 
I like that. go with this one right here or do I want a black and white I think I'm going to make this one black and white now I'm going to play with my flashes because I want some brightness added to this so I like that nope, nope, nope <laughs> Lots of nose. So that was the one that I wanted right there. So now the tree's a little better. Take my clarity and see what that does. Oh, I like what that's doing to the tree a lot. There's where we want it. So now I'm going to take my highlights and pull my shadows up. Let's see how much I can take of that. Now, vibrancy, when you don't have any color, you can see that this, this particular one still allows you to take away and add some. So, it was turned all the way down. Well, it wasn't quite all the way down. You can see all the way down gives us our weird world again. Kind of like in that weird world, though. on us oh I like that the clouds are tremendous on that so I'm gonna go there now I'm gonna take my depth of field and I'm gonna put it there that's per that's exactly what I want in that tilt shift look again it's all I'm all over that always Excellent vignetting. I like that a lot. Maybe turn it down a tad bit. There we go. And then I'm going to... I like my color, but I want to see what a little red added my... Ooh, that got too purple. That's a little better. If I crank over towards there, that's what I want. Cool it down a tad. I'm liking that. I don't really see. I don't need to straighten. Perf I like it. I'm loving it. So I'm going to save that one. All right. Put a favorite on it so I can find it again. And I'm going to drive down the road and see if I find some more images. Uh, that I'd like to make and I'll see you in a little bit. So it didn't take long to find the next picture I wanted to make. This dead oak right here fills the bill. Caught my attention immediately as I was driving. Ditched the car pretty quickly and headed on over to the scene. So take a look at the scene here through our viewfinder. You can see what we're dealing with turn sideways i don't know how that's going to work on the video but i hope it works okay now look at our different lenses there's normal i'm probably going to shoot that telephoto that's exactly the arrangement i'm looking for so i'm going to go ahead and click here for my my focus and then remember here is my exposure slider right next to the box that i focus underexposed overexposed i'm going to overexpose this a little deal with the overexposure in my edit but i want to get the information of the tree bark so i'm going to expose a little brighter so i can get some of that tree information in my picture and have all the elements i want i'm going to try one really blown out and see how the edit goes on that one too so there's some of my shots. I'm going to try kind of 
moving around some, seeing if the posts, you gotta watch out for the soil and all of them. Some nice snakes out here too. So here we can see the fence post a little can give us a kind of a foreground element. So I'm tri-compositionally looking at it that way. I'm making sure that my vertical line is, is parallel with the edge of my screen or the edge of my viewfinder or I'm gonna be kind of off kilter visually. And I'm going to raise it towards the sky a little more to get some more clouds there. I like that. Now I'm going to try some more, but raised for the clouds. I don't mind that small element of, of barbed wire through the front. I think that actually might add to the image. Now let me brighten up some. There we go. So those are the shots that I want of that. You know, sometimes you know exactly what you want. Sometimes you don't know so well. So now my hips matic here. Go to my shots. So here you can see the last tree shot that I took. Liking that. Similar, except there's two birds up there in this shot. I think those are birds. There's my darker one. So I'm going to go... Hmm, that's interesting too. Huh. I'm going to go back to the little brighter one right here. There we go, that will work. Apply my edit. There it goes with my basic. I'm liking how that basic one goes. Well, look at Haze Dream. Hmm, liking that a lot. That's got a eerie quality. I'm gonna work on a more eerie one here now. Work from that Haze Dream. That uses an old film that's a color autochrome film. We talked about autochrome, if you'll remember. And I'm gonna increase its, its visual texture. But I need to go into the depth of field. And I want to widen this circle up so that I get a little more. So you can see you can make it a really narrow spot. Or you can make it a larger area. And I'm wanting to make it a larger area. So you can see that's starting to come through a little more. Yeah, I like that. And we can increase how much or how little it blurs i'm decreasing the blur on this one there it is completely decreased i want a little bit like that nice i'm liking that a lot now obviously you know i'm not sticking to the reality of this picture i'm now making a real a much more emotional kind of quality to this and so i'm i'm up i'm upping the exposure to brighten it a little more I might come in and use a flash on it. Ooh, that starts tearing it visually just all apart. That's kind of interesting. Oh, I like that a lot. That is what I was looking for right there. Dang, that's, that's the kind of definition I was hoping for. So I can come back to my depth of field and control that even a little. I can start, but that flash will override in this particular edit suite. will override that depth of field change. And our flash option does increase our depth of field because of the brightness, our focus. If we have a small aperture, it will show that depth of field a lot better. Ah, it's completely vignetted. My, I already added all the texture I could. Uh, vibrancy doesn't have much effect at all. There's a tiny little effect, but it doesn't really affect it much. Uh, this particular edit set of the Haze Dream is pretty solidly stuck. Uh, you can do some things with the flash. You can do some things with uh, changing the lens setting some. Like you'll notice this lens is all the way pegged over. 
But once you apply that film, that film is pretty rigid in its look. But I'm liking that look a lot. This is kind of my artsy one, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Uh, but I'm digging it. I'm really digging it. I have a friend that I think I'm going to send this to as a gift. They're really into oak trees. And I'm often, when I'm making pictures, thinking of people, too. Um, I try to, you know, use my artwork to reach out to people also to tell my friends how I feel about them and that I appreciate their love and kindness and and that I think about them while I make my work. So now let's do a, a more typical edit on this one here. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to apply my my first one always. And I like that to start with, but there's a, another one that I've downloaded that I like to start with too called Painter. And you can see how it starts changing things pretty dramatically. Cinematic is another one that I use that I like a lot too. Uh, but sometimes applying ones you don't think are going to work that well end up working well. Music is an interesting one. I don't know why they call it music, but I like the old kind of nostalgic feel to it. But I'm going to go back to my original uh, start and I'm going to go in and now start changing some things. I have a particular idea for what lens I might want here. And I'm liking that, but I don't like how the, the tilt shift looks on this particular image. So I'm going to choose a different one. I was thinking that one though. And hmm, I like that. Oh, I like that a lot. There's what I was looking for. That's it. So now let me go and check my film choice. Always going to the Love 81 is my go-to. It almost becomes a signature of mine at this point. I'm actually going to turn down all of the texture on this one. I'm really wanting it to be more solid of an image. Now I'm going to play with some choices of flash you can see boy that flash really brightens things up well this one's gonna cool it down that one gets super dark yeah the flash effects don't always work the way you figure they should but sometimes they work really well. Oh, I like that little right there. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to increase this a tad. That's a little too much. Let me see what it looks decreased, actually. That's a little too down. That's I'll leave it where it's at. Go to my highlights and shadows. I can turn down my highlights. You can see how strange that makes it. I can bring up my shadows and that. Watch what it does to the tree bark in particular. You're going to start seeing that come through more. And I want that a lot. So up and that all the way. Vibrancy, another weird one. Turn it all the way down on this. You get a very nice kind of sepia tone. Turn it all the way up. You're getting that, that kind of crazy green again. But not too crazy on this one. I'm liking this turned way down. Oh, just a tad bit of sense of green coming through is what I want. Just right there. Boom. Check my clarity. See how it looks. I like that. Jacked up. Not touching my definition. I already know I don't want to. Uh, I took all the texture off of this one. I'm going to increase some vignetting. Made very little to no difference. Oh, a little bit of difference. Then I'm going to... I'm not going to mess with my depth of field on this one. But I might mess with my color a tad. Trying to bring in a little red there. Silver's out. It almost grays out the blue sky in that. Bug on me. Oops. So now I'm going to save that. I'm really, really liking that shot. That's going to be a winner for me. Uh, definitely happy about that. Then I'm going to save that. And I had Do Not Disturb on. I don't know why that did that notice came through but i have a meeting that i'm supposed to be in right now but you can see i'm taking pictures and making class materials because that's far more important so miss you guys a lot 
definitely wish you were in class with me and we were doing this even taking a field trip and doing this i'm gonna do so much more of that once we get back into classes and and i'll just send out notices to you guys can all come and join anyway so that's one shot that was another edit now i'm gonna do a kind of a darker moodier one so let's go with the darker exposure this is going to be more for the sky than the tree i'm going to keep the tree pretty silhouetted might even turn it down a little yeah there we go so now film choice i'm not sure i want let's see what that's looking like I'm going to put a mild effect from that film on there. Lens, I'm pretty happy with this lens. I don't think there's any issue there. Vibrancy, you can just I'm just going to show you how it's going to change things on this shot. That's definitely moodier. I'm digging that. I want that right there. I don't even need to do any more editing. The more you learn what you visually appreciate, like, and what your visual voice is, the quicker often your editing process becomes. Uh, one of the things I try to fight a lot, I'm, I missed up on uh, edit from original. I forgot to take this off the film. Boom. Okay. There's an edge difference you can have. It'll round the edges because that's a metal plate film that it's emulating. So, really liking that right there. Uh, and like I said, the more you start understanding your visual voice, the quicker your editing process becomes. The thing I try to make sure that I don't do is I try not to become too stale. So, I'm always looking at other ways to edit. One of the things I've been doing lately is, is making them more prequel. So, let me go into prequel. And I don't recommend you actually using this uh, unless you feel like okay with like buying stuff. Uh, but I have been appreciating kind of some of the weird things it can do. So it always goes to crop first and I always just exit out of it. It changes the orientation of my photo to a degree too. Uh, it tends to make any horizontal photos. It tries to stretch them out to uh, uh, <laughs> long phone-like images. So uh, I work in the effects and filters. This actually makes videos out of your pictures. Um, I'm not making a video, so you can see the different filters are all named after different places. And let me go back to effects. Because what I like, I've, I found that I like on this is an effect that's called glitch right here. And there's several different types of glitches. That's not the one, actually. I wanted pixel sort. Sorry, I was wrong. So I'm looking at pixel sort, and it does some, some things with the way it spreads your information. And to me, that starts getting really painterly. Uh, so I've been liking the kind of painterly effect that it has. So you can see what it's doing there. It definitely makes things odder it has several oh i'm liking that one so i'm gonna go in and change the types see the different types oh oh that's nice let's check out if we change angles i like that down angle oh i'm loving that though that's good quality intensities all the way up you can see if you turn it down you'll start getting more clouds turn it up it starts negating those more i'm liking that if i come in and check out different ones i can keep looking at the different types you can see this starts splitting up your red and green 
So I was, I'm liking the one that we've done there. So I'm going to click on that as a saved effect. Now it's saving it. And now it tells you you want to share it. And I, I don't want to share it. I just want to save it to my camera roll. So that's a different, more artsy kind of take on something. So I'm going to go out of this back into Hipsmatic. And now do a kind of a more basic edit. Going to apply my film. This one I'm wanting to do a black and white. So you can see I'm kind of emulating a wet plate image. My lens choice is going to change some of those effects. You can see. So it, if you know you want to shoot, you know, you want to edit it to black and white, I often rec recommend picking the film in this particular uh, editing suite before you pick the lens because the lens will change the way your film looks quite a bit on this particular one in black and white it becomes really interesting i like that one liking that one too i think i'm going with that one right there and i'm gonna come in I'm going to lower my exposure a little. Mm, maybe not. No, I'm going to keep it where it is. Clarity up. Definitely. Definition on this might be... Inter no. Look at it if you turn it all the way up, what it looks like. It starts becoming like an etching or something. Now I'm going to turn down my highlights a bit. Raise my shadows some raise them a lot actually all the way to get that wood grain again now i don't hardly ever use fade i'll show you what it does it it doesn't do much on this particular film a little bit of fade on some of them it totally just washes everything out now i've showed you tone curves they're fun to play with they can change the overall quality of exposure that you have this is gonna, this particular type of curve increases contrast. If I start dipping it, you'll notice it changing overall. If I change this, you'll see it start brightening up. That's an interesting look right there. Really brings out the, the wood. The texture of the wood itself. Ooh, I like that. I'm gonna keep that effect right there on a black and white your colored uh curves can make a difference uh, on some of them but don't often make much difference at all have that turned up all the way i don't i don't think i want to play with depth of field but i'm going to take a look at it mild I think that's doing it I'm going to check out my flash work a little because I can really bring up that texture again that's what I want right there show you what it's like blown out turn down even there click to save I'll often even do an edit like this and then I'll take the same picture edit it another way in color then I'll take both of those into Adobe mix on my phone and blend them together so let me show you what that looks like here I've got my black and white one I'm gonna favorite that one then I'm gonna go edit from the original pick a different film I'm going to go to my love. And you can see now how crazy color-wise that's starting to get because of the adjustments that I've made. I'm going to go and turn down my vibrancy some. There's what I want. I'm going to go ahead and say okay to that. Now, 
Now, since it's the same shot edited different ways, they'll line up correctly in the mix program. So I'm gonna... Now I'm in mix and I'm going to create a new project, go with my image on my phone. It's going to have all my pictures. I'm going to recents and those, those first two are the ones that I'm working with. So here it lays it into the canvas. The plus will allow me to put another layer image on there. I'm going to do that there and now blend will allow me to start blending between the two. So notice that I'm getting a split effect now it's like the central area is black and white and then the outer area is colored strangely and i can start going through the different blends so you can see kind of the different ways i can make this look this is one of my favorite programs uh, it's one of the ones i used really early and i've kind of that's interesting that luminosity so I'm kind of digging the overlay, the darken, and the multiply. And I can't decide which one I actually want. I'm going with the darken. And this, this kind of streaky color is what's making me go with that one. Lighten has a good amount of it too. Screen gets too unwieldy. That gets too dark on the edges color wise for me. I don't want it that dark. So I'm gonna go with the darken. Definitely visually interesting, very painterly too. So then I'm gonna click okay to that. And here's where I save it to my camera roll. I can't favorite this one, but until I go back into my camera roll. So, that is the ways that I have decided to edit that one. So let's uh, go look for another picture. All right, I'm actually in a, another program, that uh, another app that I like to use called Tintype. It's made by the same people that make Hipsmatic, but it shoots in a, in a format that uh, harkens to the 1860s wet collodion process or Tintype process. So here I'm gonna frame this up. I don't have much for control. It's all pretty auto on this. So I have to just shoot. And then I'm gonna be given a, the image and a chance to do some edits on it. So I'm gonna come here to the edit. And the edits are pretty basic. You can change from black and white to sepia tone to some color. And I want the color in this particular one. So it flipped it on me, but it, it will be fine when I go back. So now I'm going to take my texture and it can make my plate look really grungy. I like that. Um, if you have eyes, it's made for actually portraits. So if you have someone with eyes, you can make the eyes glow in this particular one. Now I'm going to use kind of a splotchy depth of field. And I'm going to increase that quite a bit. I can change the way that it splits up the focus like that. And the amount of, of defocusing that it does. Oh, I'm liking that. That's nice. So I'm going to save that. Yes, modify that photo. And so it should be saved to my camera roll. I could share it on Instagram here. I'm done. So it's actually a vertical picture if I look. It just goes in horizontal, so. Attic. I can bring in the tintype one that I just created. I can edit that now. I'm gonna edit from existing. And now you can see I can start applying other edits on top of this. So I can increase, decrease. You can see how kind of silhouetted this particular one has gotten. It's very graphic in the way that it's displayed. Oh yeah, it's really visually interesting. I'm going to come here and tap down my highlights, but bring up my shadows. Uh, eh, eh, maybe not. 
No, I'm going to leave them down. Vibrancy. Kind of digging the weird color on this one, so I'm making it a little more vibrant. My depth of field's already worked out. My vignette can increase the darkness around the edges, or keep. I'm going to leave it that way. I can go and apply another film effect on top of this film effect and actually increase kind of the effect, compound the effect would be a better way of kind of saying it. But I don't know that I need to do that on this particular shot. Although I do want to see what it does visually. It may be this one. Hmm. I like that. Let me go into my texture and kind of turn down my texture. If I turn it up. Eh. Looking it down. And then temperature a little red. And then I'm good. I like that one. So that's been some shots on a drive behind Millerton on the road that goes to North Fork. Um, wanted to just throw you some creation, talk about composition a little and exposure and show you how I do it on the iPhone as opposed to just my camera. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Uh, protect yourself and your loved ones, and I hope to see you all soon. Please join me on Zoom if you haven't, and let me see how you're doing. Uh, worry about all of you. Have a good one.